Welcome to my channel Sushant Chess Points. Today we are at the next topic, the exchange sacrifice. We are at the fourth example of our topic. Through this lesson, we try to take cases of exchange sacrifice which are theoretical in nature, means they are standard sacrifices. Let's get to the game quickly here. E4, E6, D4, D5. Currently, we are looking at exchange sacrifices from the French defense. Later on, we will move to some other opening. Knight d2, so called the Tarash variation, white intends to play the knight to d2 to support the e4 pawn as against knight c3, which allows bb4 pin. But the c1 bishop gets stuck, so there are some advantages and some disadvantages. Black goes for the move nf6, e5, and d7. Anyway, the bishop on c8 is stuck, black wants to play c5 and attack the base of the pawn chain. White plays bd3, c5 c3 keeping the pawn center intact knight c6 attacking d4 knight e2 so that after qb6 the other knight can go to f3 and support d4 here black goes for the very standard e takes d4 c takes d4 f6 so far everything is theoretical and we will try to reach the standard main position here e takes f6 knight takes f6 castle nf3 would also transpose bishop d6 bishop is lying on the h2 square and it is also controlling the e5 square knight f3 gains control of the e5 and now here black has choice of three moves castle qc7 and qb6 in this game black goes with the move castle one of the critical position of this variation white has choice between bishop f4 bishop g5 and knight c3 the move bishop f4 is one of the most logical moves white wants to trade his bad bishop the center pawn on d4 is of the same color of the c1 bishop and it is fixed so that makes the bishop partly bad here the c8 bishop is black's bad bishop so white trades his bad bishop for the black's good bishop and this exchange gives white pleasant position so bishop takes f4 knight takes f4 and here black tries to counterbalance the positional factors with the open f file and he often tries to play e5 and get this d pawn although isolated but a passed pawn which gives decent play with west play white can remain slightly better though here there are four lines of course bishop takes e4 d4 loses one of the knight will be taken white has choice between g3 knight e2 knight h5 and c1 in this game white goes knight e2 protects d4 firmly knight can later go to g3 and trade for the e4 knight white will later go rook e1 and put pressure on the e5 square black c8 bishop is somewhat bad and he is generally trying to play the move e5 black has some decent play rook is on the semi open file queen is ready to go to g5 or h4 and the c6 knight pressurizes d4 overall black is slightly more active than white but it looks like nothing much should happen. Black here has a very standard and a normal positional sack. Rook f3. This is a positional sacrifice, not meant for any violent attack. G takes f3. True black shatters white's pawn structure near his king. The f pawns are weak and d4 is somewhat weak. So black is relying on some positional play and of course tactics in some lines because the white king is open. Here QG5 check would be really bad, it will just allow knight g3. So comes knight g5. First idea, knight takes f3 followed by qh4. This becomes a major threat. Instant kg2 allows e5, threatening bh3. So white has to look for ways to protect f3. If he goes knight c3, there can be the very interesting move knight d4. When after bishop h7 check, king takes h7. Queen d4, then knight f3 check, and the queen is lost. So white uses the same tactical idea of regaining d4 with bh7, and he avoids the knight f3 and knight h3 checks. So one of the main moves is kh1. Also, the interesting move f4 can be played or met by two different ways. One is nf3 check. This is played by me very often, and after kg2. Black plays very sharp. He goes for QH4 and after KF3 allows E5. Very sharp play. E4 check is threatened. Bishop G4 is threatened. And things look very difficult for white. I have occasionally also tried the move Knight H3. 
when after king h1 q h4 black regains one of the pawn e f2 cannot be given up so after queen e1 knight f4 knight f4 queen f4 and after queen e3 queen takes d4 black has some compensation it's a very interesting position to play as black black can do bd7 play e5 and try to get his rook to f8 which gives him sufficient compensation for the exchange this by the way is not a theoretical detailed discussion we are trying to understand how this exchange sacrifice works and how the play becomes very sharp in the game white was king h1 setting a small trap now nf3 is not checked so after nf3 there will be bh7 king f7 queen d3 check and taking the knight back on f3 when black's king side will also be weak black wants to use the nf3 idea but in a slightly different way he goes e5 very strong and very interesting d takes e5 of course black is not interested in any e5 right now because of the move knight g1 so here comes the very strong knight f3 bishop takes h7 check of course king h7 is bad because of qd3 check so comes king h8 and here again white tries knight g1 white had to act fast here any other slow move would allow queen h4 attacking h2 and h7 both ng1 challenges the knight on f3 there is no time for ng1 because of queen h5 and the move knight c5 which looks very interesting turns out to be a blunder after knight takes e5 there is knight f3 bishop g4 pinning the knight but here comes the very strong knight e5 now the point is that after bd1 and f7 check and the d8 queen is recovered when after rook d1 and mutual kh7 white will have an extra rook and a winning position interestingly black uses the same idea but with the move knight cd4 now after knight f3 which is almost forced there comes bg4 now suddenly it looks like as if white is in serious trouble let's say queen takes d4 bishop f3 check kg1 queen g5 check mate's next move after qg4 qg4 white has only one way to save the game but it's very interesting and in fact it is slightly better for white also so he can go with knight d4 he can sacrifice the queen bishop takes d1 rook takes d1 king h7 many would think that black is clearly better and the opening has turned out very well for him it's not so look at the rook and knight they are very much in the center and white is about to play f4 followed by f5 e6 pushes center pawn materially also if we see white has 1 2 3 4 5 5 pawns and black has just 4 pawns so rook knight and a pawn for the queen is materially also equal what happens here is the centralized pieces and the center passer is giving white in fact somewhat better play and it is black who has to be very careful black managed the game very well and he could hold the draw here in this game white played f4 by the way i must tell you now that we are following the game by kramnik here kramnik is white and ulibin black qb6 activates the queen and arranges checks in time f5 queen takes v2 rook d3 rook c8 timed perfectly rook is heading to c1 and after the trade of rooks queen can manage to give perpetual checks f6 rook c1 rook h3 check black has only one move here king g8 loses on the spot to f7 check k f8 knight e6 or rook h8 both win for white black goes king g6 rook g3 check and the only move king h5 where the knight cannot give check and rook h3 check king g6 will just repeat and if white goes rook c1 then queen c1 check after rook g1 queen e3 will give black a draw and let's say f7 here then queen e4 check rook g2 queen check even queen e1 check works rook g1 queen e4 check and the game would be drawn we had a terrific game here both sides try to sacrifice some material and get very good counter play i hope you will find the lesson useful and instructive thanks for your time